Hamar. Yeah, the administration has been pushing Israel for many months now to allow more aid into Gaza. Asking, so I'll take that question in terms of U.S. ships and then commercial ships, so we can get back. Come on. Yeah, the administration has been pushing Israel for many months now to allow more aid into Gaza. It's just not happening. Um, I know Jordan has airlifted some aid in. I think the king was aboard the aircraft. And now this, uh, there was an op-ed in the Post by a number of senators saying the U.S. should look at airlifts on its own as well as sea lift to get more aid into Gaza. Now, I know the Pentagon, I think, early on sent three plane loads of aid in for, for Gaza. Are you looking at, at anything along those lines, sea lift or airlifting aid in? That's something that, I mean, we would, of course, coordinate any aid efforts with other agencies, but that's something that the helm would be taken by state and USAID. And depending on what the requirements are, of course, DOD would be on standby willing to assist. Um, but you have folks on the ground like Ambassador Satterfield. You have other folks from the NSC in the region as well, um, urging for humanitarian aid to get in. Um, should the again, department... Doing that for many months. Everyone says the same yeah. thing. It's not happening. So I'm asking, are you at least looking at uh, providing either more plane loads of aid or, or going with uh, airdrops or, or a sea lift. To get Again, loaded. that's something that state and USAID would be the lead on. And if asked DOD to help coordinate, to help get aid in, of course, we'd be willing to assist. But right now, I'd direct you to state and aid for more of those questions. Laura. Thank you, Sabrina. Um, a couple questions. First sure. of all, on the, the Houthis, um, do you, does DOD assess that the Houthi attacks have ramped up over the past couple of days. It seems like we're seeing a lot more activity. And then can you also tell us how many ships, both uh, commercial and military, have been damaged or taken offline by the Houthi attacks? I can, that's kind of similar to what Jen was asking. So I'll take that question in terms of U.S. ships and then commercial ships. So we can get back to you on that. I think, um, yes, we've certainly seen in the past 48, 72 hours, um, an increase in attacks from the Houthis, um, uh, more consistency. But again, I think it'd be helpful to point out one of the ships that they did hit was the Ruby Mar, um, which has had to have its uh, crew evacuated, um, which is currently still in the water, but um, taking on water as we speak. Um, it's creating a, an environmental hazard with the leakage of all the fuel that it's carrying. On top of that, it was car carrying, a, to my understanding, is fertilizer. So um, the Houthis are creating an environmental hazard right in their own backyard. On top of that, um, as I mentioned at the podium the other day, uh, they hit a ship that was carrying grain towards Yemen uh, for a, their own citizens, for a starving population. So again, they're saying that they're conducting these attacks against ships that are connected to Israel. Um, these are ships that are literally bringing goods, services, aid uh, to their own people, and they're creating their own international problem. And just secondly, sure. um, I wanted to ask you about Rafa. Has um, has the IDF provided any plans to DOD about about for its plan to protect civilians ahead of any kind of ground invasion? I'm not aware of any plan fully presented to the to the United States to review. Again, we're not. We're not asking to check their homework. What we're asking them to do is put forward a credible plan that they will be able to, as we have said in many conversations, protect the over one million innocent Palestinians that are there. Um, and of course, any credible plan would have to take into account um, food, medicine, services. How are you going to provide those as you move a population? Um, I know that's something that they're working through. The secretary, of course, remains engaged with Minister Gallant, um, not just at his level, but levels here at this building and throughout the interagency, but um, I'm just not going to get ahead of any plans that Israel's working on right now. He has not seen that plan yet. No, we're not, we haven't seen the plan, but we're not also asking to grade homework here. Uh, we want to make sure that whatever plan that they, uh, you know, do brief us on does include um, protecting innocent civilians in that, in that region. Yes, Phil. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. One question on Ukraine. <clears throat> sure. And one on Red Sea. The Houthi attacks have ramped up over the past couple of days. It seems like we're seeing a lot more activity. On top of that, it was car carrying, a, to my understanding, is fertilizer. So um, the Houthis are... At, at anything along those lines, sea lift or airlifting aid in? That's something that past 48, 72 hours, um, an increase in attacks from the Houthis, that's something that the helm would be taken by state and USAID, and depending on what the requirements are. And then can you also tell us how many ships both uh, commercial and military have been damaged. And I think the king was aboard the aircraft. 
And now this, uh, there was an autopsy or, or a seed lift. Get Again, that. that's something that state and USAID would be the lead on. And if asked, do you it's just not happening. Um, I know Jordan has airlifted some. Asking, so I'll take that question in terms of U.S. ships and then commercial ships. So we can get back. Of course, DOD would be on standby, willing to assist. Um, but you have folks on the ground, like in one of the ships that they did hit was the Ruby Mar, um, which. In the post by a number of senators saying the U.S. should look at airlifts on it. In the water, but um, taking on water as we speak. Um, it has had to have its uh, crew evacuated, um, which is currently still 